Welcome to the CCP informational meeting. Uh, Mr. Kernan couldn't be here tonight. Um, he was with one of our kids at state for the Gulf State Finals, which is a great thing. So I'm Mr. Nicholson, I'll be taking over. Um, and at this point in time, I'm gonna introduce uh, Mr. Robert Ridgell, who is the academic advisor from Kent State University Trumbull, and he's going to tell you all about CCP. All right, good evening. Uh, my name is Robert Ridgell. I am the College Credit Plus advisor at the Kent State Trumbull campus, our regional campus out here in Trumbull County. Um, all of our campuses have a College Credit Plus program. Uh, this program is for students who are in seventh through 12th grade. Um, this program was created through the state of Ohio uh, to give qualified students the opportunity to take college, to receive college credit while they're in middle school and high school. Um, I'm gonna talk about the admissions requirements, some of our application deadlines, um, our online application, our delivery options for classes. Um, I'll talk about some of our, um, um, uh, some of the things you need to do uh, to make sure you have for your, uh, your admissions application, some of the documentation, test scores, and things like that. Um, first thing is the ACT. If you already have not taken the ACT, you should take it. Um, there are some national test dates that are coming up, I believe this month in December and in February. Um, so if you haven't taken the ACT already, you should take it because that score is what we will use as part of the um, college readiness benchmarks that you need to uh, meet to take a college course. And so, so make sure you complete that and take that test. Um, you'll need to get it done before our May 1st deadline if you're looking at taking uh, fall classes next, next academic year. So for admissions requirements for Kent State, um, we prefer that our students have at least a 3.0 high school GPA. Um, you must meet one of the three ACT um, score requirements for English, reading, or math. So you need at least an 18 or higher subscore in English a 22 or higher reading subscore, and a 22 or higher math subscore if you want to take a college course. Um, if you meet at least one of those requirements, we can admit you into the College Credit Plus program, but that may not mean that you meet the prerequisite test score or prerequisite um, that you need to take an actual class at the university. So if you don't meet that prerequisite, then we may have you take some additional placement assessment um, to make sure you have the, pre, the score that you need to take that class. Um, our application deadlines. Um, if you are looking at taking a summer class, our application deadline is April 1st. Our fall uh, deadline is May 1st and our spring deadline is October 1st. So you must have your online application, CCP application submitted by one of those deadlines. Our online application is on our website. If you go to www.kent.edu and, and just put in backslash CCP, it'll take you to our main webpage and you'll be able to complete the online application. There's also a CCP permission form that students have to fill out and complete as well. And then you need to make sure you um, speak to your high school guidance counselor to have your high school transcript and your ACT score sent to us. Once we receive all those things, uh, we'll be able to, to process your application if you, meet all, if you meet the requirements, uh, we'll send you an acceptance packet. In that acceptance packet, you will receive information about um, your CCP orientation that you must attend, that's mandatory. Also, you'll see some, uh, receive some information about logging into your Kent State Flashline account, the student portal. Um, that is for you to have access to your grades, your Kent State email. If you're taking an online course, you gotta be able to have access to your Blackboard Learn account for those classes and so on. Also, they'll have some information about taking an Alex math placement test if, if you plan on taking a higher level math course um, at either the university or if there's one being offered at your high school. Um, delivery options. We offer classes on campus, 100% online, and then we do offer some classes at the high school. So depending whether or not you have a credentialed teacher who can teach a college course will determine if, the, if a class can be offered here at the high school for college credit. Uh, and I believe right now we have one instructor for math. 
um, that's teaching math uh, for college credit. Um, so if your child uh, has a high enough math score uh, to take that class, um, then they may be able to re they will be able to receive college credit once they complete that course here at the high school. So students uh, must submit a letter of intent to participate to their school by April 1st. Um, that is a letter um, from College Credit Plus. I believe it's on the College Credit Plus website through the Ohio Department of Education. Most of the high school guidance counselors have that form for parents and students to fill out and turn back into them by April 1st. So you must turn that in to notify the college and the school district that you plan to participate in College Credit Plus program. Take the ACT or SAT, um, that um, is a must. We use that, like I said earlier, as a benchmark to see if you meet the college readiness standards of the state of Ohio to take a college level course. Um, you want to make sure you have everything in by the deadline. Um, students. You must complete the application definitely by the deadline because after the deadline, the application won't be out there available online to even submit an application at that point. You'll be looking into the next semester or next term um, to submit a new application for that. Um, test scores, you want to get those in as soon as you can and transcripts. So make sure and the CCP permission form. So if you can get everything in by the deadline, that would be great. Most of the schools are pretty good about making sure they have everything all together when they turn into the university. So that way we can just go ahead and start processing your application. If we, ha if we have to wait on things, it just, it just makes the process take longer uh, for the student to be notified whether or not they can take the college course or not, or whether or not they need to take any placement assessment score um, tests um, to get into the class that they want to take. So after a student has been admitted, um, there will be a, a, a CCP admissions packet that they'll receive. Um, they want to go, they want to make sure they read the letter, contact us um, to set up their CCP orientation, unless we decide to provide a CCP orientation here at the high school. Um, they're going to want to attend that program. Um, then we're, then they're going to meet with me uh, individually to schedule a class if they're taking a class on campus or online. If they're taking a class here at the high school, I, I normally receive a roster from the guidance office of what students are in that class and then I can just go ahead and put them in the course um, and then they'll obviously be with their teacher here on, on campus here at the, at the high school. Um, as far as textbooks, if, if you have a child that's taking a class at the high school, I mean, at the, I'm sorry, at the campus or online, um, textbooks, uh, students are able to get that from our college books, our campus bookstore. Um, they do not have to pay for books, um, but the high school will be billed for those books, so the students do have to return those books back to the high school at the end of the term, at the end of the semester. If they do not return the books or if they damage the books, they could be charged for those books. Um, once students start um, completing courses at the university, um, they will be under the same um, disciplinary um, and uh, as any other student at the university, the same disciplinary code as any other student, and they have to follow the same academic policies as any of our students. Um, if a child, if, if a student decides that they want to withdraw from a course, or if they actually fail a course, they would, have, they would be responsible for the tuition and fees for that class. Um, so they need to be aware of that. If, if that's one of the things about the program um, that's not so great, is that they would have to pay for that tuition cost for those classes and fees um, if they decide to withdraw or if they fail a course. We want all our students to do well in the course, the classes that they take. Uh, we do offer um, tutoring on our campus. Um, we do have computer labs all around our campus our students have access to. Um, we have online writing labs and online tutoring as well for our students um, that they have access to. Um, we always encourage them to talk to their instructors and their professors if they have questions. Um, and 
and I'm here to assist them as well if they have any questions or concern about their classes. Um, at the end of the semester, the students will, um, once they receive their grades, um, they can check those grades online through their Kent State Flash Sign account, but we will send an academic transcript to the high school, so the high school will receive those grades, and they will be calculated into their high, their high school GPA. So they will receive college credit for, and they will receive high school credit for that class. Um, if they are applying to any colleges and universities in their senior year and they want to make sure they get those credits that they receive, they must request those transcripts be sent to those universities and colleges. If they decide to come to Kent State, we already have those records, we already have those grades in our systems, so they won't have to do anything but apply to the university as new and coming freshmen. Um, if they do take a class on campus, parking is free. They do not have to pay for parking. They do have access to our, um, our, our fitness center. Like I said earlier, our computer labs, our bookstore, our library. Um, so they, they will get a student ID. Um, so they will be able to use any of the resources we have at, at, on the campus. Okay. Okay, let's see. okay, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. I forget anything. Uh, are there any questions? I know I covered a lot of material. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, the placement assessment will be at Kent State on our campus. So we have some dates for those placement assessments. We have an ACCUPLACER, which is for reading and writing. And then our Alex math placement tests, uh, our students actually will take that once they're admitted to the university. So that one they can take online at home um, once they have access to their student portal. Um, but the reading and writing, they can actually, they'll have to take that one on campus and schedule that with us. Okay. Go ahead. The ACT needs to be within two years. So, what what year was that? Okay, so it's been about two years. So, say April, you're probably going to need to take a new test. So yeah, because it it'll probably be expired by the time. Well, May first. Well, it's actually the, the, the semester, that, the term that you're actually applying for. So if you're applying for fall 2020, you'll, probably, you'll need to take the ACT. So it needs to be an updated score. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Um, some of the things that, some of the benefits of the program, um, I have a lot of students that have been taking these classes over the years. I've had some that have started as freshmen. I have a lot of juniors and seniors. Um, but I've had a lot of students who have um, taken advantage of the program as far as getting enough credits that they needed for free um, that they were able to shave a lot of time off, uh, off of their college and school um, to complete their degree. So I've had some students who have been able to complete their, their bachelor's degrees in three years. I've had some students who actually were able to complete an associate degree while they're in high school. I even had one student who completed a bachelor's degree while he was in high school. Um, uh, we've had some students who were able to uh, complete two years with us in high school. Then they would, and then they were looking at a program that we offered at our Kent campus. Um, got right into that program, spent two years there, got right into their master's degree, and so in five years they were complete. They compl they were done with their master's degree program. Um, but they already had two years paid for when they were in high school. Um, I've had, recently I've had a lot of students who were interested in nursing um, complete their nursing prereqs while they were in high school, so they were able to apply to our nursing program as incoming freshmen. So instead of a four-year bachelor's degree program in nursing, it was only a three-year program for them because they did that first, they completed that first year while they were in high school. So now they were able to complete their degree in three years and it saved them a year of tuition. Um, and I've had some students go to uh, military academies, um, double majoring. I've had some students going, looking into going to medical school, and they were able to get a lot of their prereqs done so they could apply and get right into those um, like places like Neomed. Um, 
they were able to get right into those programs, but they had a lot of the, the, the stuff they needed for their bachelor's degree already done when they were in high school, and, it, and they saved themselves a lot of tuition. And if you're applying for scholarship money and, and different type of and honors programs and things like that, having those college credits look really great um, on your transcript. Now, if you are applying to like Ivy League schools, I will tell you that some of the Ivy League schools, they are not really big on students having um, college credit coming from other universities but their own. Um, so they may not accept those, those credits. They may only cite them as electives and they still may, will make that student complete their requirements for their degree at their university. But I tell students always make sure you talk to those admissions uh, people at those type of schools that do that um, because it may be better for you to go to a school that is going to accept all your Kent State or YSU credits um, because then you know you're not repeating courses that you've already taken in high school for college credit. Okay. Any other questions? So deadlines are important. April 1st, that is the first deadline that's gonna come up for the letter intent to participate in College Credit Plus. Make sure that form is turned into the guidance office, um, to the high school, so they know that you are gonna participate in the program. Um, and our first deadline that comes up are, is our summer deadline. Uh, we don't have a lot of students who take summer classes as a first time College Credit Plus student, but that is an option. But that deadline is April 1st as well. Uh, May 1st is the big uh, deadline because most students are wanting to take classes in the fall. So for fall 2020, May 1st, make sure your application is completed. Make sure your ACT scores are in, your high school transcript, and your CCP permission form. All this information is on our CCP webpage. Um, but if you have any questions, you can always contact me. Um, I have my business card out here on the table. I have a checklist of all the things the students must have done uh, for their CCP application. Um, I have our state uh, requirements um, for college readiness. I have a list of classes that are available to our College Credit Plus students that they can take at the university. Um, and then I also have our first 15 rule um, eligibility requirements as well. Uh, the first 15 is through the um, state of Ohio where they want the first 15 credit hours that you take to be classes that are transferable to other state institutions. So they want to make sure you're taking classes that you will receive credit for if you decide to go to any state school in Ohio. So they want that first 15 credit hours to be classes that are under the Ohio transfer module or have transfer insurance. So the Ohio Board of Regents uh, have already gone through and decided which classes are transferable through all the state public institutions in Ohio. So those are the classes that we try to encourage our students to take because we know whether they go to Ohio State, Cleveland State, Kent State, YSU, um, Akron, they will get credit for those classes. Okay. Same thing if they decide to go to community colleges, the public community colleges like Eastern Gateway, Cuyahoga Community College and things like that, places like that, they will get those credits as well. Okay. Okay. Are there any questions? Thank you, Robert. Um, if in this process, I know you know these things are it gets complicated. If any of the students have any questions or you have any questions, uh, the students can come see us during school. And if we get stuck on anything, we can get in there with the kids and help them on a computer. Um, we can make phone calls to Robert um, and make all this stuff happen. So there's a lot of things that need to be done, but. Just one thing at a time, go by this checklist, and, and if you get stuck, call us, and we will get you through it. Um, I see on here that uh, <clears throat> you, it, there, one of the things that we need to do is submit a letter of intent um, by April 1st, and I know that we usually we have the intent letters on the desk out there. They're not out here tonight, so everybody that signed up, we will get you a letter of intent form right to you in class. Any student that signed up, we'll get them to you. Uh, I see they're not out there, um, but for the most part, um, you know, it's a great program. We've had some kids do some pretty good things with this stuff. 
So, you know, we recommend it. It's, it's not for everybody because it is a, you know, it's, it's not, it's college and it is tough, but it, it's, a, it's a great opportunity. Um, are there any questions for myself at this point in time? Okay, um, so any questions, give us a call and this concludes our CCP meeting.